Hello friends, as we read through the Bible together, we are picking up in 1 Samuel, beginning in chapter 18. Oh, hi there, how are you? I'll read 18 and 19 and maybe 20, but 18 and 19 for sure. I started this earlier today and I got off on a rant and the Holy Spirit started giving me stuff and so it kind of turned into a video talking about the end times and what's coming up. Now I watched news from several channels yesterday and learned some stuff that was really shocking to me that I wanted to share and that video is over an hour long and it's still uploading so here is your read through the Bible video for this morning chapter 18 and 1st Samuel and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant. Y'all, there are little tiny, tiny bugs here. They fly and they land on you and they sting like a bee. I don't know what the heck they are, but they're driving me crazy. So when you see me bend over, it's me getting one of those bugs off of me. <sighs> then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Remember in the last chapter or chapter before, David, the young lad, a little boy, had just slain the giant who was a big enemy of Saul and Saul's army. Nobody in Saul's army wanted to tackle him, but this little boy said, I'll, I'll kill him, <laughs> and he did. So that's what this is all about if you miss those chapters. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, talking about Goliath that he had uh, slaughtered, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand as at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David 
because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter Merib, her will I give thee to wife, only be thou valiant for me, and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, Let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be on him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I? And that is my life, or my family's fa my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king. But it came to pass at the time when Merib Saul, when Merib Saul's daughter should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel, the Mehathalite, to wife. And Mishal, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her, and she may be a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law in the one of the twain. And Saul commanded his servants, saying, Commune with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. And Saul's servants spake these words in the ears of David. And David said, Seemeth it you, to you a light thing to a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man, and lightly esteemed. And the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this manner spake David. And Saul said, Thus shall ye say to David, The king desireth not any dowry, but a hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to be avenged of the king's enemies. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore David arose and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men. And David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michelle, his daughter, to wife. And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michelle, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass after they went forth, that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. Chapter 19, And Saul spake to Jonathan his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David, and Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where, where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee, and what I see, that I will tell thee. 
And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee, to thee word very good. For he did put his life in his hand, and slew the Philistine, and the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it, and didst rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause? And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul sware, as the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was a war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of, the, out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michelle, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michelle let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michelle took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Saul said unto Michelle, Why hast thou deceived me so, and sent away mine enemy that he is escaped? And Michelle answered Saul, He said unto me, Let me go. Why should I kill thee? So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel to Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naoth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then went he also to Ramah, and came to a great well that is in Sichu. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at Naoth in Ramah. And he went thither to Naoth and Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also, and he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth and Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also, and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, Is Saul also among the prophets? Oh, hang on just a second here. Oh, I was going to see if chapter 20 was short. I was going to go ahead and read it too, but it's a long one, so 
that's it for this morning and I'll be back this evening with this evening's Bible reading unless we get raptured out of here in the next 10 or 12 hours y'all God bless you friends and y'all when the video that's uploading now is uploaded y'all watch it and share it please I don't ask that very often but that one needs to be heard and it needs to be shared alrighty y'all God bless you love y'all